So it's day three of my self-isolation experience and, um, well, we need to talk about boredom. Um, I'm getting quite bored. Hi there, my name is Carl Mullen and I'm currently taking a look at the practicalities of putting yourself into self-isolation. Now, like I have done with the last two videos, just to absolutely clarify, um, I'm not in self-isolation because I'm sick. This is just an exercise and taking a look at what's involved with putting yourself into self-isolation by following the HSE guidelines. Now, over the past two days, I've kind of talked a lot about the practicalities of this whole process. So if you want to take a look at them, you can have a look at the first two videos. So in today's video, I just want to take you through some of the things I've been doing to kind of combat boredom and to keep myself entertained. Right. Um, as you can probably imagine, YouTube. I've spent most of this morning on YouTube and I have really, it's taken me in some directions I didn't expect to go. Uh, this is a personal favorite. This gentleman has been sent through the window of a golf cart. The other thing that's been a lifeline during all of this is my phone. It's been my means of communication between myself and my girlfriend, Ash, either that or talking through the wall. Um, staying in touch with my family, friends. But one of the other things I've been doing with my phone over the last couple of days is there's been a lot of people getting in touch asking questions as to what this experience is like. One of the first ones is, how will you stop yourself gaining five stone? That has been quite a challenge. One of my ways of getting through this has been eating my way through it. Might not be completely accurate of how it would be for someone who actually wasn't feeling well at the time. Um, but yeah, this has been one of the ways I've been getting through this experience. Most certainly. Another one says, I do wonder what those of us with kids will do. Self-isolation won't be possible. That's something that's been going through my head while I've been doing this. It's an easier situation for myself because I'm in a house, we have a spare room, but we don't have any kids. It's definitely going to be a challenge for anyone who faces that. And I suppose the way I would probably look at it in my own head is like, this is not going to last forever. It might feel like that at the moment, but it's not. And if we are faced with having to go into self-isolation, we just have to listen to the advice that we're given, follow it, and hopefully it'll pass. Another question that came in says, how can we ignore the media hype? Yeah, that's something um, that I've actually had to work on over the last couple of days. And I'm gonna focus more on that tomorrow. What I will say is I definitely am limiting the amount of time I spend reading about this course, like following all of the guidelines and listening to everything that's been said, you know, from the HSE, but also just limiting the amount of time I spend reading about it. Someone else says, Netflix, Now TV or Amazon? or TE player. If you do find yourself in this scenario, you're finding self-isolation is lonely or you know making you anxious, the HSE does have some guidelines on this as well. Um, things you can do to just occupy your brain. Things like writing, getting creative, painting, if you play an instrument, doing that. I mean, for me, actually doing this has made this an awful lot easier because obviously I'm filming this and then I have to edit it and it gives me something to do. So this is my little setup here. I got my camera, my microphone, um, got my laptop for editing and I take some notes during the day here as well. Now, it's kind of along the lines of this that the HSE guidelines are recommending that you do something creative with your time. And I have to say, while again, this is just an experiment and I haven't been sick while I'm doing this, having something like this to do to preoccupy my mind has been very helpful. Now, what time are we at? We're at, uh, we're at nine o'clock. So I kind of touched on this earlier, but I was just saying this thing has been a lifeline during this whole exercise. It's been particularly handy for me communicating with my girlfriend, Ash, because even though we're in the same house, this is kind of the easiest way to communicate, either this or talking to each other through the walls. Give her a quick shout and see how she's doing. Say hello to everyone on rt.ie. Jason, how are you doing? She's the same, by the way, yes, because I am doing this as a bit of an experiment, I suppose, but I'm trying to replicate it as closely as possible. So in fairness, she's, uh, she's gone along with it. And as well, it is something that either of us could be faced with having to do over the coming weeks, who knows? Uh, right, so it's quarter to two in the morning now. I'm after waking up and having a look on my phone. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff going on um, with regards to coronavirus. Donald Trump has just announced that he's stopping all flights coming into the US from Europe, for example. Um, it's been a big news day in general regarding this. Some sad news here in Ireland. I think with all of this, you know, it's a pretty natural reaction for people to feel worried, to feel 
a little bit panicked about all of it. There's a very good article um, on RT.ie, 10 Reasons Not to Panic About COVID-19. Um, you should definitely have a look at that. And I think it's important to, you know, heed the advice of everything we're being told, but also if you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all of it, to seek out other stuff or to take a break from it. But yeah, pretty, um, pretty extraordinary times we're living through. See you tomorrow.